Chapter 5 Run ye to and fro through the streets of Jerusalem, and see now, and know, and seek in the broad places thereof, if ye can find a man, if there be any that executeth judgment, that seeketh the truth, and I will pardon it. And though they say the Lord liveth, surely they, fare, they swear falsely. O Lord, are not thine eyes upon the truth? Thou hast stricken them, but they have not grieved. Thou hast consumed them, but they have refused to receive correction. They have made their faces harder than a rock. They have refused to return. Therefore I said, Surely these are poor. They are foolish, for they know not the way of the Lord, nor the judgment of their God. I will get me unto the great men, and I will speak unto them, for they have known the way of the Lord, and the judgment of their God. But these have altogether broken the yoke, and burst the bond. Wherefore a lion out of the forest shall slay them, and a wolf of the evening shall spoil them. A leopard shall watch over their cities. Every one that goeth out thence shall be torn in pieces, because their transgressions are many, and their backslidings are increased. How shall I pardon thee for this? Thy children have forsaken me, and sworn by them that there that are no gods. When I had fed them to the full, they then committed adultery, and assembled themselves by troops in the harlot's house. They were as fed horses in the morning, every one neighed after his neighbor's wife. Shall I not visit for these things, saith the Lord God? And shall not my soul be avenged on such a nation as this? Go ye up upon her walls, and destroy, but make not a full end. Take away her battlements, for they are not the Lord's. For the house of Israel and the house of Judah have dealt very treacherously against me, saith the Lord. They have belied the Lord, and said, It is not he, neither shall evil come upon us, neither shall we see sword nor famine. And the prophets shall become wind, and the word is not in them. Thus shall it be done unto them. Wherefore, thus saith the Lord God of hosts, Because ye speak this word, behold, I will make my words in thy mouth fire, and this people would, and it shall devour them. Lo, I will bring a nation upon you from far, O house of Israel, saith the Lord. It is a mighty nation, it is an ancient nation, a nation whose language thou knowest not, neither understandest what they say. Their quiver is as an open sepulcher, they are all mighty men. And they shall eat up thine harvest and thy bread, which thy sons and thy daughters should eat. They shall eat up thy flocks and thy herds. They shall eat up thy vines and thy fig trees. They shall impoverish thy fenced cities, wherein thou trustest with the sword. Nevertheless, in those days, saith the Lord, I will not make a full end with you. And it shall come to pass, when ye shall say, Wherefore doeth, doeth the Lord our God all these things unto us? Then shalt thou answer them, Like as ye have forsaken me, and serve strange gods in your land, so shall ye serve strangers in a land that is not yours. Declare this in the house of Jacob, and publish it in Judah, saying, Hear now this, O foolish people, and without understanding, which have eyes and see not, which have ears and hear not, fear ye not me, saith the Lord. Will ye not tremble at my presence, which have placed the sand for the bound of the sea by a perpetual decree, that it cannot pass it? And though the waves thereof toss themselves, yet can they not prevail? Though they roar, yet can they not pass over it? But this people hath a revolting and a rebellious heart. They are revolted and gone. Neither say they in their heart, Let us now fear the Lord our God, that, with, that giveth rain. But the former and the latter in his season, he reserveth unto us the appointed weeks of the harvest. Your iniquities have turned away these things, and your so sins have withholden good things from you. For among my people are found wicked men, they lay wait, and as he that setteth snares, they set a trap, to, they catch men. As a cage is full of birds, so are their houses full of deceit. Therefore they are become great and waxen rich. They are waxen fat, they shine, yea, they overpass the deeds of the wicked, they judge not the cause, the cause of the fatherless, yet they prosper, and the right of the needy do they not judge. Shall I not visit for these things, saith the Lord? Shall not my soul be avenged on such a nation as this? A wonderful and horrible thing is committed in the land. The prophets prophesy falsely, and the priests bear rule by their means, and my people love to have it so. And what will ye do in the end thereof? At this particular point in time, so far as the Lord was concerned, Jerusalem had reached the point of no return. And he made an offer, sort of, 
to Jeremiah somewhat similar to what he made to Abraham over Sodom and Gomorrah. You remember in Genesis chapter 18 verses 23 to 33, Abraham negotiated with Heavenly Father. Well, you know, would you destroy it if there was 50 righteous? Well, maybe there isn't 50. Maybe there's 40. And they bargained down to 10. And the Lord said, you know, if I can find 10 righteous, I won't destroy it. Here, the Lord promised to spare Judah if he could find one man, one person could be found who lived justly and sought the truth. Out of the whole nation of Judah, out of Jerusalem, whatever. And not one could be found. In, and then he outlines, Jeremiah outlines in different verses some of the sins of these people. I mean, you got to remember, this was like everybody. All the people in verse 2 swore falsely. That is, they lied. Lied through their teeth. In verse 3, there was no repentance at all. None of it. Verse 7, they visited prostitutes, harlots, by troops. What it meant was that the harlots were busy and they had, they were, had full, <laughs> they had dozens and dozens of people visiting them in a day. As far as Israel was concerned, as far as Judah was concerned, there was nothing wrong with that. In, I think, verse 8, it says, like horses in the mating season, it doesn't use that term, but it says when they're fed, that's basically what it means. Because you feed the horse in the morning when you don't want it to work. So, and you don't want it to work when it's in the breeding season because then it will bolt with the plow. So you, if you haven't had horses, you wouldn't understand that necessarily. But like horses that are fed in the morning, they neigh after their neighbor's wife. Which means that every, every man is after his neighbor's wife if he can get her. In verse 23... It says that they have, they're revolting and they have a rebellious heart. And in verse 26 to 28, it says that they lay snares to trap men like birds. And the powerful grow fat with their illegal gains. Judah was filled with corruption filled with corrupt prophets, who obviously weren't real prophets, but who were people who held themselves out to be prophets, all prognosticators, preachers, pastors, whatever, and priests. But the real national tragedy is laid out in verse 31, where he basically says, and my people love to have it so. In other words, even those people who may have recognized just how corrupt it was, it was suitable for them because it let them be that way. They didn't want to stand up for anything. It was easy for them to be liars, to not repent of anything, to go visit prostitutes, to do all of these things to be morally corrupt to the core. In Jeremiah chapter 8, verse 10, it said, from the prophet to the priest, in other words, for the very highest people from whom you would expect to get the very best, the very most righteous, from the prophets, prophet, not Jeremiah, but the people who held themselves out to be the religious leaders of the day, to the priests, everyone dealt falsely. And that's why Judah was destroyed. Not one could be found that wasn't like that.